Hello, my name is Matthias and welcome to the Gaming29 team selection video here on the FPL Scope YouTube channel. Um, Gaming29 was a huge double game week. I used my bench boost and there should be, in theory, a lot of stuff that I should be happy about considering I got 126 points um, in my team, 30 points from my bench boost and I also got a green arrow. So I'm up into the top 1 million finally in what has been a terrible season for me. But looking behind the numbers, it is actually not that good um i'll just explain to you in a minute but first let's take you through the transfers this is where i sort of failed because my transfers i did a whole minus 12 hit to bring in four players and pretty much only one of the four transfers in did something good um so yeah just starting at the top i was destined or i was destined i was planning on selling martinelli for fernandez either way because i was going to keep saka originally in my team uh, so Martinelli, I felt like Saka was a better option than Martinelli with uh, with everything going forward. And I figured, well, Saka's going to play, of course, so I can sell Martinelli, who's more unsure in terms of playing time. I was really high on Bruno Fernandes. I didn't really think he'd play that much more defensively, even though Casemiro was out, because last time Casemiro was out, Fernandes still produced a lot of uh, good underlying stats and even some good defield points. So I figured Fernandes is still going to be good to go. They have such great fixtures or at least decent fixtures, and uh, I figured Fernandes could be a really good option on penalties and all that stuff for Man United, especially going forward. But what ended up happening was that he did actually play further back uh, on the pitch. He played sort of like a, a six sort of DM-ish role, the playing playmaker role for Man United, and didn't really create anything at all going forward. So terrible transfer. And uh, even though Fernandes, Bruno, he got praise from Ten Hag after the match. Ten Hag thought he did great in his new role. It's more defensive role. And that's not a good sign for me because I want him to play much further forward. So that was a terrible transfer for, transfer for me in hindsight. I was really high on Fernandes, but now it seems like he's not that good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to address that later on as well in, with my team potentially. Uh, then the second transfer, I knew I was going to do the bench boost, so I knew I needed to have a second goalkeeper that could get some points. And uh, I just did the straight swap from Ward to Everson for Leicester. And mostly this was just a cost-cutting move because I just wanted a cheap goalkeeper that had potentially had could potentially get some clean sheet points. And uh, I did not get that because Everson got three points, so I took a minus four to bring in Everson for Ward, and uh, he only got me three points, so I lost one point from that alone. Everson. He had eight saves in his first match, so he had a lot to do, and that's because Leicester have been terrible lately. They they were awful. That also affected some other players in my squad that I'll get to eventually. But Everson, he was actually pretty close to, to getting a, a decent score in the first game week, despite conceding an own goal. <laughs> he kept a clean sheet for like 60 minutes and had like six saves, so this was looking like a great transfer for me for getting Everson in for that cheap of a price. But then... Free kick for Crystal Palace, hits the bar and goes into the back of Everson and into the goal. Own goal for Everson. He loses all his bonus points, loses his clean sheet points and also gets minus two from the own goal. And then eventually he ends up with eight point or eight saves and it looks like he's about to get a ninth save and that will bring him up to bonus two, I think, at least. And he'd actually get like a decent score from that game if he had just made one more save. But then right at injury time, Mateta comes through and scores. If Everson saves that, it's it's a great match winning save from him uh, for the first part and secondly he would have had his ninth save and would have had bonus points and and all that would have had a great score but instead he concedes again so he ended up with two points i think from that from that game alone and then the second game just flops Leicester terrible uh, Brent Rodgers got the sack he he's sacked now so so yeah, that's also going to be interesting to see what's happening with Everson. He got sacked in between the two matches, so Everson actually kept his place. So at least I have that going for me, but I'm not going to start him uh, going forward anyway. So so yeah, he's just going to be rooted on my bench and he lost me a point from the transfer. So not happy about that transfer. Third transfer, even worse. Sol Gabriel, one of my, uh, my favorite players in FPL and uh, brought in Shaw. Shaw has been really good this season in FPL and annoyingly I didn't bring him in in game week 17 like a lot of other people did because he was so good at the start of the season I didn't sell Reese James for Luke Shaw right after the World Cup break and I got so punished for it I lost I think close to like 100 points from that move alone just because of 
stuff that happened afterwards because I did some transfers I wouldn't have done otherwise because I didn't have Shaw and and yeah I lost a lot of points from that and I didn't want to do the same thing again because Shaw was looking like a great option Man United with great fixtures going forward until the end of the season figured Shaw would be a great great option but they concede in the first game and uh, he gets a yellow card in the second game and then he gets subbed off with an injury after 36 minutes so one point from Luke Shaw and again I did a minus four to bring him in for Gabriel so another minus transfer with Luke Shaw and then finally we get to the only transfer that was uh, that was a good transfer for me and that was Saka to McAllister and I wasn't going to do this transfer transfer originally but it was just I was watching the FPL streams right before the deadline and uh, let's talk FPL Andy he had uh, some some inside info that Saka was going to be benched for some reason it came as a shock to most people most people thought it was, would be or was going to be an April Fool's joke but it turns out Saka had been been uh, ill he, he's been sick so he didn't start that much so luckily I managed to do a transfer I managed to sell Saka and bring in McAllister McAllister got nine points decent from him but Mitoma of course outscored him again so Yet again, my Brighton midfielders have not been as good as they can be, uh, March and McAllister. Uh, but anyways, nine points for McAllister at least. I'm I'm happy with that considering the other three transfers were just garbage. So minus 12 to bring in all those guys that and none of them really provided that many points apart from McAllister. So if I just done just kept all my Arsenal players and started Tony, Kane and Botman rather than Martinelli, Gabriel and Saka... In total, I would have had 109 points compared to what I got. And I did get 126 points in total, but that's without the minus 12. So I did get 114 points um, like as a, as a net uh, gain. So that means I only got five more points than I would have had if I had done zero transfer, transfers and kept my bench boost. So if I had done that, I would have had two transfers for gaming 30, one more transfer than I have now. I would have had my bench boost in hand, and I would have only lost five points from it. So in general, the bench boost, even though I got 30 points from it, it's going to be a net negative uh, in total because I could have used it uh, much better for a different game week. But yeah, that's that's basically how the bench boost has been for me the last few years. Uh, last season, I... I spent a lot of time building up like a good bench boost squad. So I did, again, I got a lot of points from my bench. But yet again, it sort of affected my rank and affected my my uh, scores in different other game weeks before and after the bench boost. So I keep getting high scores on the bench boost, but it keeps also just fucking up my team, messing up my team. Sorry, I shouldn't use the F word. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it keeps messing up my team. So yeah, I'm not a huge fan of bench boost, so even though I got 30 points from it, I'm not that happy. And I'm not that happy with 114 points either from such a huge double game week. I had 29 matches worth of players because I had um, every every single player had a double game week apart from Kane. So yeah, it could have gone a lot better. And, uh, and yeah, I can just talk you through the, the whole team really. David Raya was an absolute saint in the first match, even though we conceded three times against Brighton. He had I think 11 saves so yet again one save away from another save point and some bonus like it was with Everson in the first game so so yeah Raya eight points pretty happy with that considering the difficulty of fixtures for him so the good saves from him also came in handy and I'm pretty happy with Raya and Everson going forward as my goalkeepers but anyways Ben Chilwell finally got some point returns from him he actually didn't look all that good in the second game because um because yeah Chelsea sacked Graham Potter and uh, Chilwell still played as a wing back, but he didn't play quite as offensively in the second game. But incidentally, that turned turned out to be the game that he actually got the most points um, since I brought him in last game week. He's been so good in terms of getting huge chances and, and getting um, yeah, chances created, getting good uh, XGI and all that stuff, but he hasn't really returned in terms of FPL points. But then in the second game of this game week, he got the FPL points, but he didn't really have the best, like, underlying numbers and like attacking data compared to the other two games so, so yeah that's just the randomness of FPL sometimes but anyways nine points from Chilwell really happy with that and it seems like he's going to play going forward as well Frank Lampard has just been hired as the new interim manager at Chelsea and uh, and we all know what Chilwell and James did under Lampard previously so so yeah I think both those guys are really really good going forward uh, Purvis has to be on seven points didn't uh, didn't get anything from the first match where they conceded three three goals against Brentford. He did get a clean sheet in the second match, however, ended up with seven points. No 
bonus points and uh, he was also really close to getting some assists and goals potentially in the first match but he didn't get that either so Estepinian keeps looking really good in terms of underlying numbers and stuff but Brighton haven't been the best defensively so yeah seven pointer decent from him Kieran Trippier again it's been amazing this whole season and uh, he has the highest point score in my whole team 14 points he managed to get uh, an assist and a uh, clean sheet and uh, didn't get the clean sheet against West Ham in the second game, uh, but they still hammered the Hammers uh, with 5-1. So he could have had a higher score, but 14 points was amazing from Trippier again against Man United and West Ham. Not the easiest to, to get the points from, especially Man United, where he got most of his points. So yeah, Trippier amazing again. Shaw, talked about him earlier, one point, it's terrible, now he's injured. I'm still going to keep him because I think for double game week 34 and onwards he's going to be good, but I could just bench him going forward anyway because my my defense is pretty good. So it doesn't really matter for the future, but it's just annoying that he was so bad this game week when I had such high hopes for him uh, since I didn't get to own him earlier in the season when he got points after points after points each game week when I didn't have him. So so yeah, Soli March, eight points. Again, he's been the worst performing Brighton midfielder since uh, everyone wildcarded in game week 26. And uh, he's had the best underlying numbers out of all the Brighton midfielders as well since that point. So we all know about uh, justice for March, that he didn't get the goal that he should have had. And uh, that has cost him. He's also been really close. He had, I think in the first match, I think he had eight shots um, for Brighton against Brentford. Second match, he's also he was also pretty good, but he only got the one assist from the first match in total. So eight points for March. Kind of disappointing when Mitoma gets 14 from way less XGI, but that's just how it is, really. March underperforming his XGI, and Mitoma is overperforming his XGI, and that's why I think Mitoma is a better option going forward, even for the price. Because the reason that I, that I brought in March in the first place was that he was slightly cheaper than, than Mitoma and McAllister, and also he didn't have the international break um, thing that McAllister and Mitoma had, which ended up being not that significant anyway, because Mitoma and McAllister played both matches anyway. So, so yeah kind of a letdown there in terms of picking March over the other two in the first place. Another huge letdown, Bruno Fernandes talked about him earlier, four points, not much to say about that. Rashford as well looked not that good really against Newcastle, but he got his um, his goal against Brentford and that ended up with 12 points in total. So that was a good captaincy option for me. I didn't really consider anyone else in, in attack other than Rashford and he ended up with the most points from my attackers as well because I didn't have Watkins or Mitoma who are like the two main threats to my rank and both of them did really well so that's another negative thing about this game week for me uh, Madison four points again terrible looked nothing like the Madison he has looked like uh, before Leicester just been awful don't create much going forward now they might get a new manager they had the interim manager in the f in the second game where they didn't really do anything at all so I think the pressure will be on Leicester to get a new manager Rafa Benitez is the most likely to come in and uh, I hope so <laughs> could because of two reasons, really, because he's linked with West Ham, which is my favorite team, and I don't want him as my manager, as the West Ham manager at all. But in terms of FPL points, he's actually decent for attacking midfielders like Madison. He's proven that in the past. Steven Gerrard's best seasons in, uh, in FPL was with Rafa Benitez as the manager. Luis Garcia was also in a similar role to Madison that Liverpool did really well there as well. And uh, yeah, throughout his career, really, Rafa Benitez has gotten a lot of points from like the sort of the player playing behind the striker has always been getting a lot of points so I think in terms of FPL I think Rafa Benitez would be a great hire for Madison and defensively as well it might be good as well but as a manager not sold on Rafa Benitez I think it's like 10 years too late uh, for him but anyways that's a bit of a digression um, let's go to McAllister nine points the one good transfer like I said earlier nine points decent from a penalty in the first match so kind of lucky he hasn't looked quite as dangerous in the, in the two games in the game with 29 as he did previously but he's still a good option on penalties and and yeah he's looking looking decent as well Alexander Isak incredibly unlucky Newcastle have been amazing he was amazing in the first match against uh, Man United as well he created the first goal pretty much even though he didn't get a fail points from it blanked in that first game two-pointer and then Callum Wilson got subbed on for him late on against Man United and he scored and that goal and also Callum Wilson's uh, great track record against West Ham made uh, made it so that Eddie Howe chose to bench Isak for the game against West Ham and Callum Wilson got the start instead Callum Wilson again scored twice against West Ham he always scores against West Ham annoyingly 
Isak got his goal in the end because Fabianski was um, was really helpful with that. West Ham were down 4-1 already, so for me as a West Ham fan and an Isak owner, I was kind of like, Ugh, whatever, 5-1, 4-1, doesn't make a difference. I at least get some FPL points finally from Isak. But Isak, he's looking so good, but Callum Wilson is going to be a huge detriment to, to Isak in terms of FPL points, so not as high on Isak going forward as I was previously because Wilson has found his form now. Now that I didn't need him to find his form, he has found his form earlier in the season when I had him. Of course, he didn't pride that much. So, but anyways, it's just me moaning and rambling again. But 30 points on the be- on the bench from the bench boost. That was pretty good. Botman's points were came in really handy. He got a clean sheet against uh, Man United. So nine points from him. Kane scored a penalty against Everton after also making sure that Everton got down to 10 men after kicking, I think it was Damari Gray first, and then he kicked Decore as well just being a bastard really Kane and then he got shoved in the face and went down like a sack of potatoes and a clear red card for Decore but Kane not a huge fan of the the guy I think he's overrated as like a person but as a player he's he's good and got seven points for me so I guess I can't complain about that Ivan Tony scored against uh, Brighton a really good uh, well taken goal from Tony showed again his class didn't really do much in the second game against Man United but he was close to getting an assist so Tony's looking good as well, and also, more importantly, he managed to not get a yellow card, so he didn't get suspended. He could have been suspended for the second game uh, if he had gotten a yellow card for the first game, but he didn't, and he's also an option for game week 30, but as we'll get to see, he is a likely candidate candidate to be sold anyway, so let's just take a look at the current plans for my team, and uh, these are my current game week 30 plans, and as you can see, the potential move I have, I have the exact money in the bank to do Ivan Tony to Erling Braut Holland. Holland has been injured since the international break and it's looks it's looking like he's going to be come back now. He was featured in like a training video with uh, Man City. Looks like he's going to be fit and he's going to want to get some minutes against the Fountain before a huge match against uh, Bayern Munich in the first of two legs in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. So so yeah, I think Holland is going to play at least he's going to get like a 30 minute cameo against uh, Southampton but I think considering what he has done so far this season I think Holland's going to start against Southampton and that's why I really want to bring him in I do have the money to go go from Tony to Holland so I'm going to do that I don't have the money to go from Isak to Holland which I could have done if I if I had the option but I think Tony to Holland also makes sense because you never know with Tony he might get his yellow card now and be suspended so he's sort of like a ticking time bomb and they play Newcastle anyway so I feel I feel pretty good about selling him He's been a decent player for me, but it's time to get an even better player in, and that's uh, Erling Braut Holland. So those are my plans. In terms of captaincy, the captaincy is currently on Rashford, as you can see, but as soon as I bring in Holland, I think Holland is going to be my captain choice. But there are some decent options in general in the in this team. You do have Rashford and, and Holland, like I mentioned, but also Harry Kane. He does play against Brighton, though, and Brighton are really good at the moment, so I'm probably not going to captain Kane, but he, he is a decent option. Another option is... Like I said, James Madison, he's been awful lately, so shouldn't really be considered as captain because of that, because he's been really terrible. But if, let's say, they do hire Rafa Benitez and then they do have Bournemouth at home, he's not the worst differential pick because no one's going to pick him this week, so maybe he'll be good. Who knows? But those are some of the some of the options for captaincy. Also got to make a decision on who to bench because I have some decent players on the bench. As you can see, I have Isak against Brentford away as my first guy on the bench. And then Estupinian against Spurs away, second guy on the bench. Those two guys could potentially come in. We'll have to see with uh, Luke Shaw's injury. I might sub in Estupinian for Shaw if Shaw is, uh, is likely to be to be out. Malasia could play for Man United, so it's a good chance for that. And not too worried about Estupinian as well. I think Estupinian can get a goal and assist at any time. He plays really offensively, and Brighton could also just thrash Spurs, like 4-0. Who knows? Because Brighton are really, really good. They are way better than Spurs at the moment, so I don't feel that bad about playing all three of my Brighton players, really. But I know a lot of other people have sort of a similar dilemma. They might have to bench a Brighton midfielder, and uh, I, I think I'd advise against that. But if I had, for example, if I had Watkins rather than Isak... I definitely want to play Watkins and potentially even Captain Watkins at home against Nottingham Forest. So if I had the same team and with Watkins rather than Isak, I, I'm really unsure what I would do, actually. I think I'd bench March because he's just been sort of a disappointment. But if you have Mitoma and McAllister, 
I feel both those guys are really good. You gotta watch out for McAllister and his potential injury. He got subbed off, and he's been sort of tired lately because he played in uh, was it Australia? I think. Uh, if I'm yeah, if I'm not mistaken, he played in Australia, traveled for a long time before the double game week now, so maybe he needs a rest. So you could swap him out if you are in that position where you have Watkins and you've got to bench someone. I guess you'd have to bench McAllister, but. I don't know. I feel like also Fernandez is also another option to sell. He's usually really good against Everton and they play Everton at home. Should be a decent fixture in terms of points. But Fernandez played as the DM in the absence of Casemiro. And it's looking like they, like he's going to do that again because Casemiro is still suspended for the game against Everton. So I think Fernandez is also a potential guy I might bench. Currently, I am benching Isak, and that's because he's been benched in real life. He's been playing behind uh, Callum Wilson as the starting striker for Newcastle. But if I get any indication that Isak might be starting, I think I could potentially bench Fernandes, but who knows. Uh, Holland most likely going to be brought in. Can't really see any other transfers. I could potentially like do like a double transfer, Fernandes to Grealish or something, and then upgrade Isak to, to Holland, but... I feel like Isak is going to be really good going forward, so I don't really want to sell him either. So those are just some some of my thoughts for my team going forward. Not the worst team. It could be a huge game week for me. Who knows? But most people have a similar team. So or at least most people that are engaged with FPL content have a similar team. Uh, but who knows what's going to happen, really. But anyways, that has been uh, the team selection video. It uh, would be really appreciated if you like it and uh, subscribe and stuff. If, uh, if you haven't already, you can watch the uh, FPL School podcast from yesterday. Me and Kevin, I'm actually recording this video before that podcast, so I don't really know what has been said in that podcast, but that was posted uh, yesterday in terms of when you're seeing this, because this video is getting posted on uh, Thursday or Friday even. <laughs> I'm getting my days mixed up. But anyways, um, if you if you didn't, it didn't know from, um, from the podcasts i talked about at the start of the podcast or i'm going to talk about at the start of the podcast why i haven't uploaded stuff uh this week because i didn't do the weekend walkthrough and i didn't do the weekly walker draft as usual and there's a reason for that i'm going to talk a little bit about that in uh, in the podcast if you haven't listened to that already so anyways like and subscribe all that good stuff and uh see you next time